Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here for KW Bonsai. It's a beautiful day, mid-April, and the last bit of snow is finally melting away. Um, it's time to start working on our larch trees. If we look at the buds on the larch, the green is just starting to come out on the buds. And this is the ideal time to repot them and do your bud pruning. You can see what buds have uh, survived the winter and are going to grow for the upcoming year. So we can selectively prune away the buds we don't want. So let's have a close-up look at the buds and I'll show you what uh, I'm talking about. So we'll zoom in and have a look at the buds. And you can see right where my scissors are pointing, there's just some green showing on the tips of the buds. And right there. So that's the time to repot larches and we can start doing our structural and bud pruning on them. So larch trees are very apex dominant. If we look at the lower branches, they're, uh, you know, developing, but as we go up top in the tree, you can see that the cluster of buds just gets greater and all the vigor is at the top of the tree. So in an upright forest like this, it's always a battle to keep the top of the tree, the growth suppressed, and to encourage the growth down lower on the branches in order to balance the vigor of the tree. Otherwise, we'll end up with these big top-heavy clusters of needles and branches up top. And we'll also get a swelling. You can see on this tree, we're starting to get fairly thick at the top of the tree. So, what you have to do with larches like this, they'll just keep growing. The tops will get thicker, they'll get taller, and they'll get more branches. So we always have to fight to keep the tree to size and keep a nice taper on the tree and to limit the amount of growth at the top and encourage growth down lower. So the first thing we're going to do with these trees we're going to start up top on the apexes and we're going to get them back under control. If we were to let this apex grow this year without any bud pruning and branch pruning, it would get very thick up top and you would start getting inverse taper on your trunks. So you can see on this one, I, I've cut off the trunk before and replaced the apex with, well, sort of two, there, with sort of two apexes now. So we'll, we'll want to remove one of those and replace our apex with a nice kind of flowing branch line. And this will take some of the vigor out of the top of the tree and it'll also keep our size down. So we'll start doing that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna replace our apex. We don't want this much vigor in the top of the tree. And I don't want it slanting off to the side like that. I want these trees to be fairly upright. So we're gonna start by cutting off this trunk here, or branch. There we go. And we wanna replace our apex with a nice flow line and this one's, this branch is pretty good here. So we're also gonna cut off this one here. Like so. And that leaves us with a, a single trunk line. Now it's not very straight, but uh, you can get, you can get, uh, you know, you can start bending, wiring the branches straight. But I'm not too concerned with this forest to have an absolutely straight trunk. Um, yeah, I, I can live with sort of the tops being a little twistier on these trees. So the next thing we want to do on these apexes is, is start re reducing the buds. And we want to reduce them back. So we're going to leave a pair of buds on the tip here. We're going to cut this one back to a pair of buds down lower here. And you want to wait till spring to do this operation because some of the buds, 
if they don't make it through the winter they won't come out they'll just be you'll see the little dead bud there you don't want to prune back to dead buds so in spring you can see the buds swelling and you know which buds are living and which what's alive in the tree so that's why I wait till spring to do my bud pruning structural pruning and thinning so the apex looks good now we've got every branch is reduced down to two two buds and it's short and compact as possible and we've taken out a lot of vigor in the apex of the tree by removing some of the upper branches so the next branch we're going to tackle is this vigorous one here here get rid of this dead piece in here we've got a few old dead pieces here we can get rid of and we can cut this branch back to here we've got two buds in close here and we can get rid of this top one which is overlapping the bottom one and we'll get rid of some of these stubs Sorry, I'm probably in the way there. There. And I'm going to get rid of this one too. So that branch is cleaned up. And I'll show you what it looks like from the top now too. So here's that branch from the top. We come out from the trunk. We divide here. We've got two buds. The branch divides into two and two again. And it'll subdivide into two again this year. So that's about as compact we, as we can get that branch. And we've taken a lot of vigor out of the branch by removing a lot of unnecessary growth and clutter. So we'll go on to the next branch now. So you can see on this branch here, we've got a lot of vertical growth here. So we can take a lot of that off. We'll prune to an outward facing bud, like so. And we'll reduce this one back to our, its first pair of buds and that one will leave we'll clean up a dead stump back here from previous years so that branch is pretty cleaned up now we'll do the same for this one we'll get rid of our vertical growth here then an old dead branch underneath here which we'll keep just for interest. We'll just clean up some of the pruning points from last year. And I think we're going to get rid of... No, we'll keep that. That one's about as cleaned up as we can get for now. This one I'm going to remove the end bud and keep the two buds in closer. There's some vertical growth on this one I can remove. And I can actually remove this branch which is crossing in front of another one. We can prune this one back. This one can be pruned back. So we've got to keep our top growth very tight to the trunk in order to get that triangle silhouette on the tree. So we got to prune back very hard at the top and not so much at the bottom. So I'm going to continue doing that, pruning up the trees. Just one note about uh, repotting these trees. Uh, this is the ideal time to repot them. However, this forest has been repotted two years in a row and even though I'd like to rotate this tree a bit to get a straighter trunk line from the front, uh, I'm not going to do it this year. I'm going to give the trees a rest. I'm going to let them just grow in this soil and we'll repot next year. I just, um, 
it wouldn't hurt to repot them three years in a row. You can do a lot of light trimming, but I don't think the roots will get thick enough that it'll be any trouble repotting them next year. So for the apex of this tree, I'm also gonna cut it back a little. And again, it'll be a bit on a bit of an angle. So we're gonna cut it back here. Just to take a bit of the vigor out of the top of the tree. And we'll prune it back to our first set of good buds. And we'll also get rid of some of these branches up here. We've got quite a cluster of branches and we want to sort that out. So I'm going to take this one off at the back. Like so. And this will become our new apex, so I don't think we'll use this back one either. Reduce it back to there. Get rid of a dead piece there. And get rid of a dead piece in here. There, so that apex is shortened. We've taken a lot of vigor out of it. Now we've got to do the same for the branches in this general area. It's getting too thick of foliage in this area. You can see some of these uh, branch ends have like quite a cluster of needles. Some of them have three three buds at the end of each each branch. So we got to take that back to two. This one's getting very vigorous. Take that one back, this one back. And we've got some strong growth here. We want to take it back. So we want to get rid of some of these branches in here. Got, I think we're going to have to remove this one. Clean up some of these areas. Okay. This one we can cut back. We've got some good buds back here. So we've taken a lot of vigor out of the top of the tree and we're going to do lighter pruning down below. One thing to remember with larches, it's always easier to grow your branches longer than it is to make them shorter. So if you do have a lower branch that has a lot of inner buds that looks really good and, is in it, and are in a nice position. You may want to shorten a lower branch and then let it grow out more in spring so it gets light. When you're pruning buds on the uh, branch tips, try and uh, prune to a downward facing bud if you want the branch to begin weeping. So you can do a lot of directional pruning. You can select the buds that you want to grow in a certain direction so your branches aren't overlapping and that kind of thing. And again, take your time. It doesn't have to be done in one day. You can do one tree a day for a week. So we're, we're slowly getting there. We're taking vigor and branches out of the top of the tree and leaving the lower parts almost as is. We're just doing some light pruning to the tips to get keep the branch direction the right way. And yeah keeping vigor down low, taking it away from up top. So we're kind of balancing the energy of the tree. So I finished what I call a first pass at pruning. That's where you get rid of everything that's, you know, fairly obvious 
that you don't want structurally like this. And the next step will be as this as the buds start to grow, we'll get little green tufts of needles on them. And you again you can go in and look where the foliage is too dense, you can thin it out and kind of balance the tree again when the foliage comes out. So this will do for a first pass. It gets rid of a lot of obvious branch structural errors. We've balanced the vigor of the trees. We've taken a lot of foliage and branches and buds out of the top. We've left the bottoms. We still prune them, but we've left them a little longer. More buds, more vigor in the bottom. So next steps for this forest is in a forest, it's nice to have variety, both variety in heights and variety in trunk thicknesses. So we don't have a lot in this forest. They're kind of, the trunks range from this high to way up here, which isn't too bad, but the thicknesses are fairly consistent. We don't have any big major trees. So the next step is we'll allow our, our taller trees, which we want the thickest, to grow more in the summer. And we don't want the branches to grow on the inside towards the other trees. We have to keep those fairly pruned. But the outside ones will let grow with more vigor and that'll build the trunk thicknesses up slowly. It'll take many years. But, um, and then we'll prune them back short again. So that'll be an effort. Uh, that's a future goal is to get a little more range and trunk thicknesses on the forest planting. So on the forest floor, I've added a, a tipped over tree right here, just to give it a more of a natural forest look. If you ever go in a forest, you'll find trees tipped over everywhere and branches lying on the ground and getting mossy. And so, I wouldn't say it's ideally planted right now, but I've just kind of roughly positioned it and I kind of like it. So it's a good use if you do have a bonsai tree that dies, you can use it on your forest floor as a dead tree. Uh, the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to prune up the moss a bit. So last year we had some, this moss got quite thick. So we're going to prune it back. We're going to give all the moss a trimming and it won't look very good at first but it's getting quite thick and if we don't trim it now it'll just bush up in the summer so we want to prune it back almost to the soil level and then it'll regrow and it'll stay short for the rest of the year so that's the last thing we're gonna do so you just scissor prune your moss I use these curved scissors they uh, they work quite well also, the moss at the edge of your pot here, you want to make sure it's trimmed back. You don't want moss overhanging the lip of your pot. It looks very untidy. Especially if you're going to put the tree in a show or something, it's very important to see the lip of the pot. So you can see the moss is very thick. And I know it's a shame to prune away this nice green moss, but if we don't do it now, it'll just be horribly thick in the summer. Your other option is to strip all the moss off and replant it, but I like to keep the moss as long as I can. And by pruning it, you can keep it almost forever. It'll just keep growing. So we'll continue doing that and we'll check in when that's all done. Okay, so we've got a lot of our moss pruned up. We'll continue doing that over the summer is trimming the moss and, you know, continue to landscape the forest. And the trees are pruned up. The balance of the uh, branches looks a lot better. I'll probably still do, you know, the odd uh, touch up here and there as I look at the trees over the next couple of weeks and as I say when the needles start coming out 
We'll probably do a second pass at pruning to kind of equalize the vigor in the trees. And uh, yeah, but that's it for today. So Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai, we'll see you next time.